Hi, welcome to Pyrography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. In this tutorial episode, I'm going to explain how to create my super easy Halloween sign artwork. This one's a little different because I use coloring crayons on the background. In fact, you could have your kids help you color it in. It's lots of fun to do. Well, let's get burning. Begin by using a writer pen tip to burn in the trace lines. The font I used for this artwork can be found on a font generating website. I'll put a link to one below. So if you don't like the font that I used, you can switch it out for something else. Switch to a shader pen tip of your choice and burn darkly along the edges of the letters. Then burn short, dark, pull-away strokes along the edges. Start the stroke on the edge and pull it towards the center of the letter. I like to work in small sections at a time. I begin by burning a dark line for a short distance and then burn pull-away strokes along the line. Keep your pen tip in optimal position while you work so that the edges of the letter are clearly defined. I find it's easier or quicker to burn all of one side of the letters and then rotate the board and burn the remaining sides. As I said before, I burn one side on all of the letters and then rotate the board and burn the remaining sides. This allows me to minimize the number of times I have to rotate the board so that I keep the pen tip in optimal position. After burning along the edges, the letters will have unburned centers in the wide areas. Burn over those centers using the flat of the shader to burn wide bands of color. Keep the centers a shade or two lighter than the edges. At this point, I like to finish one letter before moving on to the next one. You can do the same, or you can burn all of the edges and leave the centers for last. Heck, you can even burn the centers first and then burn the edges. The order you do the steps really doesn't matter, as the end result will still be the same. At this point, it's just a matter of burning in the letters following the same guidelines we've been using all along. Burn dark along the edges of the letter, then burn pull-away strokes along the edges, start the stroke on the edge and pull it towards the center of the letter, keep your pen tip in optimal position, and rotate the board as needed to facilitate this. Lastly, burn over the center of the letters using the flat of the shader. Our next step is to burn the pumpkin to a dark brown or black color. You will see that I switch pen tips a couple of times in this video. I am testing out different sizes to see how large of a tip I can use and still burn within the lines. I am burning wide, vertical bands of color to fill in the pumpkin. The goal is to create a fairly uniform dark color, so you can use any burn method you like that produces the desired results. Use the shader of your choice and burn using the flat of the shader to get wider burn strokes. Also, Rotate the board as needed to keep the pen tip in optimal position when working along any edges. I have the heat set high enough to get a dark burn result, but not so high that the pen tip turns red. The manufacturer told me that allowing your pen tip to turn red from heat is very damaging to the pen tip and it can shorten its life or usability considerably. So even though there is smoke coming from my burn strokes, 
the heat isn't so high that I'm gouging the wood or turning the pen tip red. Now the inset photo on the left shows an old piece of artwork I did when I was still very new to pyography. The wood has a lot of gouge or groove marks in it, and that happened from having the heat set too high. The higher the heat on your pen tip, the more it has a tendency to sink into the wood instead of burning on the surface of it. Now I know to keep the heat set lower, and it takes me longer to burn in an area, but I end up with much smoother results and no gouging. The next step is to burn the fleshy part of the pumpkin. The only thing I did was burn it to a tan color and re-burn along the outer edges so that it was a couple shades darker. I'm going to tell you right now that I should have made the flesh a lot darker. Maybe a dark tan or light brown color. Use the flat of the shader and burn vertical bands of color to fill in the fleshy areas. When re-burning, I use the vertical strokes and circular motion. Quite truthfully, you can use any burn method you prefer. I just recommend burning the flesh on your pumpkin darker than what I did mine. Also, I kept the inner edges of the flesh lighter than the outer edges. My reasoning was that the inner edges had the candlelight in there so they were a little bit more illuminated. As you work on the flesh, burn it so the inner edge is lighter than the outer edge. The reason is that the inner edge is closer to the candlelight inside the pumpkin. An orange arrow is pointing to an inner edge on the right eye. With the mouth, the only addition is to make sure the points are light. Now I accomplished this by burning darker lines to the left of the points on the left side of the mouth, and then the line moved to the right side of the points on the right side of the mouth. The points are the end or tip of each tooth. Yellow arrows are marking a few of the points. Also, for the mouth, I started using circular motion to burn in the flesh. Other than personal preference, I don't have a reason for this. Please use the burn method that you like best. Use a white crayon to color in the inner corners of the eyes, the top of the nose opening, and along the top of the three center teeth. Then switch to unmellow yellow or an equivalent color and burn in the rest of the opening in the area. Do your best to avoid the teeth. Clean off any wax debris before proceeding. I will be using a heat embossing gun to melt the wax, but a hair dryer will also work. Use a heat source, hair dryer or embossing gun to blow hot air over the wax to melt it. Then use a piece of wadded up tissue or paper towel to blend the colors and remove any excess wax. Next, use vivid tangerine and color along the lower edge of the teeth and the outer corners of the eyes. Afterwards, heat and blend that color. Use the Vivid Tangerine and color in a curved dome above the pumpkin. Stop before reaching the letters. Remove any debris and then heat and blend the color. Switch to an orange crayon and color around the word Halloween, avoiding the letters as much as possible. Then heat and blend the color. I found it easier 
to heat and blend in small areas at a time, otherwise the wax tended to cool back down. Recolor over the upper part of the vivid tangerine dome using the same color. Let the color overlap onto the orange and then blend it with the tissue. Now do the same with the orange crayon and then extend the color along the sides of the board. Afterwards, heat and blend the color. Notice how much darker and smoother the orange layers on over the still very warm board. Plus, while the wood is still warm and the wax super soft, I could blend the color without having to use the embossing gun. Color over the rest of the board with the orange crayon. You can work in sections like I did, or color the entire board and then heat and blend the color. It really doesn't matter which way you choose to do it. The last step is to use burnt sienna or a light brown color in the corners. Then heat and blend the color. This is where I discovered that I should have used the darker color in the corners first, as it didn't layer over the orange very well. And yes, I did try a brown color, but it didn't make any difference either. Apparently, the orange was a very potent color. I didn't like how pale the letter seemed after the background was done, so I'm re-burning over the center of them to darken them up. I'm primarily using circular motion for the reburn, but I'm also using uniform strokes. Not that it matters, use the burn method of your preference. Well, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. This really is a fun and easy project to complete, and it is one that you can have your kids help you with because they can do the coloring. On my website, there is a written version of this tutorial along with the pattern, so feel free to check that out anytime. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you next week. Bye!